Coming up on Hands on iOS, we are diving headfirst into the clock. Tick tock, stay tuned. Hands on iOS is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. There are loads of apps you can download from the App Store, but Apple packs in quite a few that are the default apps on your devices. And maybe, you know, you haven't really done a whole lot with them. You might have a thousand alarms or you might have uh, taken some basic photos with your cameras app. But why not get a little bit more in depth with these and understand the true power of the apps that actually exist there, not the true power of the dark side. Uh, we'll start in the clock app. It is the same across different devices, whether you're using an iPhone, an iPad or uh, an iPod touch, but here on the iPad, I think it has a beautiful uh, look and feel. So that's why we are going with that. Um, first of all, in the bottom left corner, you can see that our first page here is called World Clock. And it does as you might imagine. It shows you the time in different locations. What's super cool is that this gives you a lot more detail than maybe you thought was available. Instead of just telling you the current time in San Francisco or in Brisbane, it also gives you the hour marker, how far ahead or, or behind these different times are according to your time. It's not Greenwich Mean Time, it's actually your time. So Brisbane, for example, is 18 hours ahead because yes, in Australia, they live in the future. Uh, as well as, what I think is fun, the sunrise in that time and the sunset in that time. So this is a really, I think, kind of a business feature. Uh, first and foremost, or maybe it's, you know, a, a communication feature because I know my aunt lives in Adelaide. She doesn't, but, you know, for the sake of the, the example, my aunt lives in Adelaide and I need to know, am I able to call her right now? And, oh, you know, she likes to take calls in the morning, but after the sun sets, she kind of wants to settle in for the night, a woman after my own heart. And so I know that I can call her right now because it's 6 a.m. in Adelaide and the sun will be rising soon. Um, so... You can add and subtract clocks that you have here, as well as see here, this line, for those who don't know, shows the state of the sun, the current position of the sun, what's basically being shined upon, as it were, and which parts of the earth are in the dark. So to make adjustments, I go up to the top left corner and there's an edit button. And you can see that these little red circles appeared next to these different times. So maybe I don't need to know the time in Moscow. I can hit the little red circle button to simply remove it. And Pali, I don't want to know what time it is there. So I'll get rid of that as well. Hit minus. And let's go with uh, Sydney. Don't need to know the time that it is there. So then I can kind of drop the times that I have. And I just tap done to move on. So you've got a cousin who just moved to Greenland and you need to know what time it is in Greenland so you know whether it's a good time to call them. Well, it's as simple as going to the top right corner of the world clock portion and tapping the plus button. And then I can type in Greenland. And yes, they live in Nuke, Greenland. So I will tap that and it adds the time uh, right there to the uh, world clock app. So you can see Nuke is right on the cusp of darkness. It's about to be, um, the sunrise is about to, the sun is about to set there. And one last little tip, pro tip, hint here. You can see that the clock faces are different. You may be wondering why some are black clock faces and some are white. Well, the areas that are currently in the sunlight are in white, and the areas that are currently in darkness are in black. I think a clever little hint and a nice little feature that's built right there in the clock app. Let's move to the next tab, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. This ah, is the alarm app. You can see I must live some sort of privileged life, being that I have no alarms in here. Um, that's just because all of them are on my, my iPhone. You may know how to use this. It's as simple as tapping the plus button in the top right corner, choosing a time that you want. So say 6.30 a.m. You can set it to repeat. This is really nice if each day of the week you need to be woken up at a specific time, which, by the way, pro-life tip, 
It's very important to go to sleep at the same time each day and wake up at the same time each day if you can help it. It's very good for your sleep schedule. So I'll say yes, I want every single day to be woken up at 6 a.m. I can change the label, so the basic default label is alarm, but maybe I want it to be, please get up. You can put anything you want here. I will say that a number of my friends tend to throw some curse words into the label to really uh, encourage themselves to get up in the morning. And then you can choose a custom sound. So you may know, you may be familiar with that default sound, which is a, a sort of ringing, and maybe that's just getting old. So you can choose different ringtone sounds that are available here, as well as classic sounds that you may be familiar with, like crickets. But maybe you wanna go with something more custom. You can actually go into your, sound, your music library and pick a song to wake up to. But here's a pro tip, another one, I'm sorry. Don't choose a song that you love because chances are your brain is going to start associating waking up when you probably don't want to with that song and then you suddenly won't love that song that you've loved forever. Um, not speaking from experience, but maybe speaking from experience. So I'll choose a song that's okay, but is not necessarily one that I love. And that is a song by, let's go with a song by Adele. Can I find a song by Adele I don't love? Um, Daydreamer is okay, but it's not wonderful. So I'll select that and then it will add it to my list of songs. So you can see these are the different songs that I've had before. Ashes and Wine, Take On Me, oh, too good a song to choose as an alarm. Daydreamer and All Night. So now that's selected. You can, uh, of course, if you have ringtones that you've purchased in the past, select those from there as well. Then I hit back. I hit, uh, I can choose whether to let me snooze the alarm. If you're one of those that snoozes, 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 then you need that turned on. But if you don't want to give yourself that option, then you just turn that off uh, by flipping that little switch there. And I'll go ahead and click save or tap save. And now I've got my alarm. Um, it doesn't repeat and I've got the song selected uh, right there. Now to remove alarms that you don't want on your device, you simply tap the edit button, tap the red circle to get rid of it. So some of you out there may have set a bunch of different alarms for specific situations, but you don't need them anymore and you're wondering how to get rid of them. It's as simple as tapping that edit button to remove them. All right, let's move on to the next tab. This one is one of my favorites. This tab is called bedtime. Bedtime is the super cool feature that Apple has uh, introduced that lets you set a bedtime a specific time that you want to go to bed and however many hours you want until you wake up in the morning and it will run an alarm for you. It does a special, uh, there's a special selection of ringtones that you can use that are meant to sort of lull you awake slowly but surely, rouse you from sleep. And when you set up this feature, it actually starts to track your sleep in Apple's health app. So you get information about your bedtime and your waking time and how much time you spend in bed and all of those things over the course of time, as well as what I think is super cool, a reminder that, hey, in 30 minutes, it's time to go to bed. So I'll tap setup. And let's say I want to wake up at, again, 6 a.m. And I'll just go with the first one. It's called early riser. I'll tap next. What time do I want to go to bed? Well. You can see a bedtime of 11 p.m. gives you seven hours until your wake-up alarm goes off. Well, maybe I'm a person that needs nine hours of sleep, so I'll crank that back to nine, and you can see that it's adjusted. You'll get nine hours of sleep. I tap next. What days do I want this set? And look, the iPad's telling you what I was telling you. The more consistent your schedule, the better your sleep. So I'm gonna leave all of those selected, but you can deselect them if you'd like. And then tap next. And then it sets up this beautiful UI to let you know your bedtime's 9 p.m., you wake up at 6 a.m., and you have it turned on. You can then from there easily adjust, should you choose, your sleep and awake time, and it will show you how many hours of sleep you're going to get based on that. Then that information is synced and tracked within the health app for iOS. If you need to make any adjustments uh, for that going forward, there is an easy button in the top left corner called Options, and it lets you choose the days that you want this active. Uh, it tells you, hey, how soon do I want my bedtime reminder set up? Do I want it to tell me at bedtime that it's time to go to bed, 15 minutes before, 30 minutes before, etc., so you can start winding down. And one of my favorite features 
It's do not disturb during bedtime. There is nothing, well, I shouldn't say that. There are many things that are worse for your sleep, but there's nothing digital worse for your sleep than a device that is lighting up after you are laying down and trying to go to bed for many reasons. One, because it's blasting this light into your bedroom, you should be keeping it as stark as possible, as low energy as possible, as quiet as possible. So bzzz and lighting and all of those things are just disturbing your sleep, keeping you up, but also because anytime a notification pops up, it sends a signal to your brain that suddenly there's something that it needs to be focusing on other than just trying to wind down for the day. And for many people, it can be difficult for them to not then have to go look at their phone. I say this from not my own experience because I am very much into sleep and have gotten sort of control of that, but from watching others who uh, seem to not be able to resist the temptations of a device even after bedtime has settled in. And then if you decide you don't really like that uh, sound, you can change the wake up sound and you can change the volume of the alarm in the morning. I should note that do not disturb during bedtime. It follows the rules of you do not disturb settings. So if you have it set to where a person calling you more than one time will actually make the device ring, then it will follow those rules and will still send you those alerts despite the fact that the alarm is, or rather the do not disturb setting is turned on. So that is bedtime. Up next is stopwatch. This of course is the feature that you may be familiar with. If you've ever run track or done some sort of running uh, thing, it is the start and stop time that lets you sort of figure out your timing on different things. This really, Apple has built this as a feature that has many of the running sort of cadence built in lap uh, options. So you can see how quickly you're doing your lap. It's got the split in there. It's got the total time that you're going. All of those things are built in um, it's not a feature that I use very often because I'm not a runner, uh, but it is available for anything where you don't need a count down timer, but you need a count up timer. And oh, I just did another lap. And oh my goodness, he did a lap in five seconds. That doesn't make sense. I can hit stop. And you can see all your times here, and then you can easily reset to adjust it back to default. Then last but not least, my favorite, other than bedtime, it's the timer. Uh, this is the egg timer, the kitchen timer, the cook timer, the uh, I need to remember to do this thing in 30 minutes instead of right now timer. This is the all-encompassing uh, app the clock, within the clock that I love to use. So, uh, you know, you can set a timer for up to 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds or as little as one second. And then you can choose the sound that it makes when the timer ends. Again, uh, these are the basic sounds that are available um, and even has the classic sounds as well. So I'll hit cancel on that. And when a timer goes off, you can choose to uh, start it up essentially at the same time again. So you can have repeating timers based on that, uh, but then you just tap done whenever you're finished with it. One of the things that I love about the timer app is that it's not just available on your iPad or your iPhone. If you have an Apple Watch, I actually have, and I'll show it here, a timer complication built right into my device, or built right into my watch face. And so I can tap on that and I can easily click to have a three minute timer set. So when I'm making coffee or something like that and I'm waiting for the coffee to steep, I like to have that timer feature right there on my home screen and I can quickly and easily start uh, a timer from there. It also shows my recent timers, which is really nice as well. Yeah, so the, the clock app has many different features available within it that you may not know about outside of the alarm. Many of these features are accessible using Siri as well. So you can have Siri set timers for you. You can have Siri um, set an alarm for you. You can figure out what time it is in different places. It goes on from there. 
Uh, so this is not just an app that you have to tap into, but you can also use your virtual assistant to access some of these features as well. But if you're not using the other features beside the alarm, these are ones that you definitely want to check out, particularly bedtime. If you have trouble uh, sort of going to sleep at the same time each night, getting enough hours of sleep, you might give bedtime a try because I've found that having that reminder, it's sort of, if I need it, to be sort of shamed into it or just to be reminded, you know, hey, you're winding down, maybe you don't want to have uh, something to eat right now because it will disturb your sleep or it's uh, you know, no, no time for a glass of wine right now. Uh, having that feature there reminding me that this is the bedtime you said you wanted to go uh, for, so you better go ahead and make use of it. I find that uh, the clock app is very helpful with that. So between world clock, alarm, bedtime, stopwatch, and timer, I'm sure if you haven't already, you should be able to find something helpful there. And at the very least, I've shown you how to clear out all those alarms you've set that you're no longer using anymore. So I do appreciate you tuning in. Of course, you can head to twit.tv slash HOI, and that will take you to the show page where you can subscribe to the show in all its different formats. You can also head to youtube.com slash hands on iOS, all one word, which gives you access to this show right on YouTube where you can subscribe as well. Also, if you have questions, you can send those to me at handsonios at twit.tv. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we will be back next week with more tips, tricks, reviews, and questions answered right here on Hands on iOS. <laughs>